Okay, hello and welcome to video 15 of this series. So uh, before we go into the graphical user interface, I just wanted to make a kind of speed test so what we can reach. And the results were very interesting. So I won't show you the implementation, uh, so how I implemented life. So uh, I just show what I did. Uh, so the first thing is um, I did, uh, again, an, uh, correction of a mistake. So um, as you remember, uh, I defined this hex bytes type and uh, the, the parser was not correct. I used ORT here and of course the right function is digit to int, otherwise we will get wrong values. So that's one thing. Uh, so what I was interested in was uh, the extraction speed of the chain, how it is currently. And um, I will show you two things. So uh, first, uh, about the code. So what I did, I added, um, where is it? Yes, I added a statistics module, which has this uh, statistics data structure, which collects the number of data units and the number of bytes. Uh, and then also some, some times. So the first time when, uh, when, the, when the data unit was received in the current time. And then for this, we calculate the uh, statistics. So, so a number of uh, packets per second and the number of bytes per second. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing I added was uh, that I wanted to make sure that all data is passed correctly. So I used the, the force use the force function uh, from from the DeepSec library, which is already in scope with Rio. And uh, the thing is, uh, normally, as you probably know, Haskell is a lazy language. And so um, we made the data field strict. But as for example, for the maybes, um, uh, maybe is it still uh, is not a strict data type. So it's still a lazy thing. And uh, normally, um, um, Haskell only evaluates to weak head normal form, uh, weak head normal form. So, and weak head normal form is uh, up to the first constructor, and then it's an, uh, unevaluated. So, if you want to make sure that the complete data structure is evaluated, uh, you have to use DeepSec. Uh, and for this, um, there is this NF data instances you can derive automatically. Uh, and this is done, and then you can use this force function, which makes sure that this um, data structure is fully evaluated. Um, this is also important if you are in a multi-threaded context. So if you have lazy evaluation uh, enabled, and then you parse something in, in one thread and pass it to another thread, and then it's not fully evaluated, then uh, uh, this may be evaluated in the other thread and then you lose the, the advantage of the multi-threading. So if one thing should be fully evaluated in, in one thread, then um, you should use the deep second. That's what I did here. And I also used that in the chains for, um, we have here this uh, extracted, when we extract the push packets. So on that level, uh, there is also, where do we have it? on the yields yes here is a force and uh, also when we convert um, when we convert the push packet to the tm packet so there's uh, so that we have all the, all, all time uh, a complete evaluated packet uh, this is also quite important for for measurement uh, for performance measurements because uh, if something is lazily evaluated it won't be evaluated at all and you get the wrong performance figure so um, okay next thing is um, how to um, to measure that so I introduced um, a conduit and I did that did I do it in that file let's have a look yes I have a, a frame start conduit and the packet start conduit the frame start conduit takes in the TM uh, the meta frames and then collects this information how does it collect the information? That's a good question. So uh, you remember this app state, which is uh, basically the environment we pass with the reader T monad to every function we have on to every conduit we have. So uh, we had the config inside and the log function until now. So I added two T vars. So these are transactional vars from the SDM library, basically mutable vars, but they are threadsafe. Um, and one for the frame statistics, one for the app statistics, and they contain one of these statistics structures. So we, 
that we can for both on the frame level and on the packet level collect the number of them and the bytes of them and then calculate the, the number of uh, uh, data units per second and the, the number of bytes per second. Uh, yeah, so um, we can access them, of course, and this is then done in this conduit. So uh, basically, um, uh, for the frames, as we have a fixed size, we just get the, 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 the length in bytes from the conduit, and then we get the, the frame starts from this. Um, so this is the variable with this get frame starts. Uh, we get the T bar, and then we modify this T bar with this uh, start new DU. And the start new DU is from the statistics. Uh, it's from the statistics from the statistics module. So basically it operates, it takes the time, the current timestamp, uh, the number of bytes, uh, and then uh, the old statistics and generates a new statistics and currently does this with lenses and I don't want to go into lenses now. So the thing is, it just, uh, the, the it increases the number of N, so one more frame or a packet and then this edits also the size and then we have a new state. Uh, and the times are set then conditionally because there are maybes. So at the initial start, we, we have a nothing here for the times and then on the, on the runs, on the subsequent runs, we get adjust to the correct time and then the calculation can happen. So you need always the old um, the old value and the new value of the statistics for, for the incremental change between two calls and for the total change, um, you need some other thing. But um, uh, so for uh, when we call this the first time, we don't have the time available from the previous because there is no previous. So uh, that's why we have a maybe here. So. Um, I don't want to go into much detail about this. Um, so there are conduits now added. If we have a look at the chains, so um, this is the this is the chain from the NCTRS from the socket NCDU NCDU to team frame, and then is this frame start conduit which calculates the statistics for the or the, the packet rate for the frame rate to be sure um, the frame rate. Uh, uh, and then uh, passes the, the frame on to the switcher. And the switcher sw switches it to the virtual channels. And then for the virtual channels, we have the gap check, then we extract the packets, then we collect the packet stat, and then we, then we drop the idle packets. And then we convert the uh, to the to the TM packet, and then uh, I just calls. Uh, I don't want to have this pretty show here because pretty show uh, prints to the terminal, and this is really slow. So I just pass it to sync null. Sync null just throws everything away. It collects everything from upstream and then throws it away. Um, and this is run in a loop, of course, uh, as in, the, in the conduit loop. So. Um, in case, so in case if you wonder that you have just measuring after the packet extraction and not after the TM packet. So the, the one reason is, uh, as this is run in a loop, this is uh, always the same, basically the same measurement. And the, the other thing is that after we have converted to a TM, TM packet, we don't have actually the size available, so we can't calculate the bytes per second. Um, yes, that's the thing. And um, so this then updates these two statistics t vari variables in the in the global app state in the read t monod in rio yeah uh, and it does this um uh for every frame and every packet that comes in as you remember you can have a frame and they have multiple packets in one frame so uh you will, we will have more packets than frames and uh, then in main um, i think in main let's have a look yes uh in main uh, actually, uh, I then start in, in with the async library a statistics thread in the background, and this thread runs all two seconds, collects the results, and uh, locks then with lock debug so that we can switch it off. Uh, locks then the output, so the, the performance, the frame frame total, uh, the, the frames per second, uh, and the the, the uh, bytes per second. And we have two two measurement values. The one is is the current rate, and the other is the total rate. So the current rate is between two measurements. So we have this at uh, this thread is called every two seconds. 
So uh, for these two second interval, we calculate the number of packets per second and the number of bytes per second. And then we have a total rate which collects the total number of packets in the run and uses the whole time interval for the calculation. So this is then the total rate and then um, this will then just accumulate and stay then. And the, the actual rate, the, the, the current rate goes up and then when, when the injection is finished, it will go down to zero again. And we do the same with the packets per second. We calculate this, then we just uh, print out uh, if we have bytes per second, kilobyte, megabyte, or gigabyte per second. Don't think we will get gigabytes per second, but anyway. And uh, yeah, uh, everything else output print to terminal is disabled. Um, so let's see, I, we have two, I, I want to show you two runs of this. Um, so that we see how fast it really is. So we currently don't do much. We just extract the frames and then extract the packets in two different threads, and that's it. So um, Haskell can be quite fast. So let's see how fast it really is. And the first thing is we test it with Paragon TT, which, which is this uh, spacecraft simulator, which is at in, in use at ESA and DLR. And I've already loaded it up with a test file. And this test file has a list of, of packets and you see here GM packet. Actually, that's a Haskell data structure. So this is how it works. And then you have parameter values here. So let's go down. This is just a big, this is one of these hex bytes things. And then we have here some normal parameters like a name, uh, a value. We have an off byte, uh, offset, off byte, offset, and bit offset. So all, all things you have seen already. So. And the thing is, we have also a repeat function, repeat n, which repeats this list in this uh, 5,000 times. So in this list, there are 200 packets and it repeats it 5,000 times. So we get uh, 1 million packets. Um, so actually, let's make a run. Oh, yep. Yeah. And I need another config. Uh, in this config file, I connect to the correct port. So now we don't see could not connect, but we see here on Paragon TT we are connected and we get the first output. So we are currently on zero, zero packets per second, zero frames per second. And uh, yeah, that's expected. So let's go. If I start simulation, then we'll see the, the how, how fast uh, we can get things. Start. And then also Paragon TT has a measurement. So you see here this, the speed and then we see we're coming in 3000 frames per second, 18,000 uh, packets per second. And the rate is going up increasingly. So the total rate and the current rate is you see, you see here. So currently we are 18,000, 19,000 packets per second, uh, 3.5 megabytes per second. And when the in injection is finished, then it, this one will go down to zero again. So. Let's see. So 19,600, so about 20,000 packets per second. This is quite a good rate. So um, you don't want to know how the real, what, what the rate of the real mission control systems is, but it's lower. I say that. So um, yeah, we should be finished soon. So as you remember, uh, we have only um, we have about 170,000 frames because they will uh, the packets, 1 million packets will be packed in frames and we have less frames. So that's what we have. We have the total of 19,483 packets per second for this run and 3,279 frames per second. That's not bad. I, I got higher rates, but I have also the, the, the video recording and so on running in the background. So this will also account for a little bit. So this is the first thing, first test. This looks quite good. This re looks really good. So um, as uh, as a second thing, uh, I just uh, took this uh, this file from Paragon CT and converted it into, into a binary file by pumping it into a file. Yeah, the generated telemetry. So now we can check the speed of the with this dump file. Yeah. So I created this dump file, and it's called this. Uh, 1 million packets raw, yeah. So I've already prepared this. So uh, I cut this file pipe into netcat. And then we let our tool connect to this. And uh, since I used the default port, we can just use deck run. And let's now see what we get. Started the app. And wow. 
So this is basically the maximum speed you can reach with this network. And you see we are already finished. We are here at zero. Yeah, so I stopped the program and we got a total rate of 163,805 packets per second. Yeah, and this, this is 30.4 megabytes per second in this case. And that's a really good speed. And uh, about 27,647 telemetry frames per second. So, um, yeah, one thing to note, I compiled with optimization. Yeah, this I, I forgot before. So let's look at the Kabel file. I compiled the library and the executable both with the following. Switch with, with minus O2 with the LLVM backend. And I uh, also set the, the the linking optimization of the LLVM packet to minus O3. So this is the one of basically the, the best optimization you can reach. And you see, um, this result is really, really good. Yeah. So perfectly happy with that, with the performance. Um, I also did uh, then a, 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 a profiling version. I compiled the profiling version and had a look. And let's let's have a quick look into the profile. Uh, so this is you, you compile with a stack minus minus profile. And the thing is basically warning you shouldn't do that because um, then it compiles it, it, it provides every function uh, is instrumented and this is uh, not not really um, this, this this has a, a deep impact on the on the optimizer of GHC and can reduce the performance drastically and it does so this one is to be um, a little bit taken with a grain of salt normally you would manually attach coast centers to the functions you want to profile and then uh, compile with with uh, uh, ghc no prof auto and then you get only the coast centers you have entered uh, this is one is it's now compiled and you see interestingly uh, this most most what our time is spent in the calculation of the crc yeah and here also on the lookup uh, we provided this this lookup table for the crc and most of the time of the is spent in the lookup in the, of the CRC function, so this would be something um, to to take into consideration. And for the percent of LOC you see also here, that's uh, some internal function of Etoparsec does allocate a lot. Well, that could be expected. Um, yeah. So so far for the profiling. I have an own branch created for the statistics measurements, so this will not be a regular thing because of the of the changed um, uh, optimization flags, which I won't use for the for the following things. This should be um, the release or production version should then be compiled with full optimization enabled, but this can take quite a long time. So we are now I have still a reduced number of modules, but if you have a large project, this will take really long. So uh, it's on the statistics branch. You can find it there in the in the Git repository. So I'm quite happy with that result. Yeah, this the speed is really really fine for me. Um, and yes, so let's go then into the graphical user interface for the next video. Thanks for watching.